15 United Nations war heroes. And New York put up one of its famous parades on Broadway for those whom it delights to honor. These British and American heroes, whose exploits cover world battlefronts from Norway to Java, came here to help launch this nationwide war bond campaign. New York was eager for a glimpse of the men they've read about, and thousands gathered in the City Hall Plaza to add their welcome to those of Mayor LaGuardia. This is the New York boy who headlined in the newspapers his famous wireless report. Sighted sub, sank safe. Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Normally, I talk too much. Today, I am speechless. <laughs> Couldn't we use that boy in our city council? <laughs> and at the White House, President Roosevelt, in the company of the First Lady and British Ambassador Lord Halifax, received those brave fighting men who have been honored for heroism and sacrifice. Then as a climax to a great day they'll never forget, these warriors who have been joined together in a common bond of unity went in triumph uptown where Madison Square Garden roared its regards. <laughs> Sergeant Herbert, who took part in the Vauxhall and Lofoten Islands raids, gave a modest hero's speech. Gentlemen, I don't know actually what to say. That's all I can do is to do my duty as it comes along. I think that everybody in the British Army, Navy and Air Force are just doing their duty and trying to kill as many as possible. Thank you. And on this note, we take our leave of America and switch over to Northern Ireland, where our King and Queen have been paying a brief visit, in the course of which they spent a day among American troops. And we are glad to welcome to Britain units of Uncle Sam's fighting forces who have come to join us in the fight for freedom. Royal visitors even had a ride in those funny little jeep cars. And finally, the king took the salute of the march past. The path to the quayside on their way home was lined by American sailors, and their majesties made the journey to England by destroyer. Now another switch over, this time to London, where Mr. Churchill returned after his third meeting with America's great statesman and leader, President Roosevelt, where secret plans were made. Yes, plans which will hasten the day when British and American armies will march into countries not as invaders but as liberators, liberating the people who have been held under the cruel Nazi yoke. <laughs>